Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 neighbours from hell. Number 10. Alan Markovitz 59-year-old strip club owner Alan Markovitz was going through a separation with his wife, Lee Tuhi. Tui had been cheating on him, and after their separation, she moved in with the man she had been having the affair with. Markovitz was of course upset, but rather than taking it like a mature adult by picking up the pieces of his broken heart and moving on with his life, he lashed out like an angry teenager with way too much money. Markovitz moved next door to his ex and her new boyfriend. He spent $7,000 to build a 12-foot bronze statue in the shape of a middle finger and stuck it in his backyard directly facing his ex's house. He claims that he's over his ex and the middle finger is directed at her new boyfriend. Number 9. Lynn Taylor and Christopher Levasseur one of the more unusual cases of neighbor harassment comes from Warwick, Rhode Island, where Craig Fontaine and Kathleen Malka live beside Lynn Taylor and Christopher Levasseur. Problems arose in August and September 2011 when Fontaine and Malka claimed their neighbors fired BB pellets at their car and kayak. Taylor and Levasseur also tried to kill the other couple's cat by locking it in the trunk of their car on a hot day. A restraining order was put in place against them because attempted pet murder is, to use the legal term, cuckoo crazy. The strangest claim was that Taylor and Levasseur trained their cockatoo to insult Fontaine and Melka. The bird would swear at them loudly throughout the day, but when Fontaine and Melka called the police to complain, the police said that Taylor and Levasseur were not violating the restraining order because the bird was the one making the comments, not the couple. Number 8. Felice and Ralph Scala Canadians are famous for being nice, polite, and neighborly, but there are exceptions to every rule as demonstrated by father Felice and son Ralph Scala. The Scalers lived in the Junction neighborhood in Toronto, Ontario. The Junction is a small community where a lot of houses are crammed together. While most people find this quaint, the neighbors of the Scalers thought it was hell. Take 87-year-old widow Carmela Canino, who had been living in the neighborhood since 1958. Felice Scaler was having problems with some criminal charges, so he asked Canino for a character reference, and she chose not to give him one. Scaler was so offended that she wouldn't defend his character that he had her windows smashed, had broken tire spokes placed in her lawn, and threw dead animals onto her property. When she was cleaning up the mess, he'd stand outside and laugh. Number 7. Laurie Christiansen In 1998, Greg and Kim Hoffman moved into a home in White Bear, Minnesota. Three years later, Laurie Christiansen and her daughter moved in next door. At first, things were good between the neighbors. That was until about 2009 when Christiansen's daughter poured nail polish on one of the Hoffman children. Kim Hoffman went over to talk to Christiansen about the incident. Christiansen didn't like the accusation and told Hoffman that she should take care of her own children. While this should have been just a simple spat between neighbors, it was actually the start of a campaign of terror against the Hoffman family that would last for five years. Christiansen constantly harassed the Hoffmans, often mocking Kim because she was struggling with alcoholism. The Hoffmans got a restraining order, which Christiansen violated. In 2012, she was given five years of probation, 50 hours of community service, and fined $50. Number 6. Mitchell Igelko There are two different stories about how the feud between Mitchell Igelko and his neighbors began. According to his neighbors, it started when they fired Igelko's company from doing maintenance on their lawns. Igelko's wife claims it stems from a time when his beloved dog was discovered badly beaten and bleeding. Regardless of the origins, Igelko started terrorizing his neighbors in his southwest Miami-Dade neighborhood. Some of the highlights include murder threats, egging houses, and poisoning the neighbor's lawn so badly that the soil had to be replaced. He also dropped nails on driveways and the road in front of houses and smashed car windows. The neighbors installed video surveillance, which caught Igelko in the act. He was arrested and originally given five years of probation. Number 5. The O'Briens Close to the city of Birmingham, England, was the home of the O'Brien family, who were known for trying to control the neighborhood through harassment and violence. Police were called to their home at least 40 times for serious incidents. What is really disturbing is that this went on for 10 years. Things finally came to a head in 2012 when the O'Briens and a few other people were brawling in the streets and police responded. An officer had part of his nose bitten off by a dog, and while it was thankfully reattached, it was the end of the line for the O'Briens, who were evicted from their home. Number 4. Gian Wilding Bottomley is a small hamlet between Leeds and Manchester and is made up primarily of four expensive estates for people commuting to the two major cities. It was a peaceful, idyllic little spot until 57-year-old retired businesswoman Gian Wilding moved there in 2002. 
One neighbor said that there was a problem with wilding almost every day for 16 months. Between July 2004 and November 2005, there were an astonishing 259 incidents that the court heard about, including throwing broken glass and nails onto driveways, pouring oil onto their lawns, throwing dead animals onto their properties, and vandalizing cars. Fifteen people and organizations brought charges against Wilding, and she was given an antisocial behavior order, ASBO citation. Number three, Michael Carroll. Your neighbors are usually in a similar socioeconomic situation to you, but then there's the case of Michael Carroll. In 2002, Michael Carroll was a 19-year-old garbage man living in Norfolk, England. He then won £9.7 million in the National Lottery. That's $14.5 million. So started the nightmare of people in Swaffham, Norfolk, where Carroll bought a mansion called The Grange. He started years of partying, during which he apparently spent over £1 million on prostitutes and drugs. He also turned his yard into a demolition derby that went on 24 hours a day. It covered the neighborhood in dust, and at any time, day or night, there could be a car crash that led to visits from ambulances and fire trucks. His behavior was so bad that police set up a hotline for his neighbors to call if Carroll was getting out of hand. By 2010, Carroll had lost all of his money and was forced to sell the Grange. Number 2. Barry Ardolf Children like to explore their surroundings, and Matt and Bethany, Kostolnik's four-year-old son, was no different. Shortly after moving into their home in the Minnesota suburb of Blaine, the boy wandered into 46-year-old Barry Ardolf's backyard. Ardolf, a computer technician and father of two, scooped up the boy and brought him back to his parents, where he kissed the young boy on the lips upon dropping him off. Naturally, this weirded out the Kostolniks, so they called the police. Adolf was quite upset that the police would pay a visit over something like that, so he decided fair payback was ruining Matt Kostolnik's life. Adolf downloaded a hacking program and hijacked the Kostolnik's Wi-Fi. Adolf then emailed Matt's co-workers and bosses at the law firm where he worked with child pornography pictures. He also started sending threatening emails to various politicians, including Vice President Joe Biden. This led to the Secret Service visiting Kostolnik. This continued for two years. Matt's law firm eventually hired an investigator, and they discovered that Ardolf had been messing with the Kaczynski's network. The FBI was notified, and Ardolf was arrested and later given an 18-year prison sentence. Number 1. Ken McElroy Everyone in Skidmore, Missouri, knew who Ken McElroy was. He was charged 21 times, but each time he managed to avoid prosecution. It helped that he would threaten or bully witnesses until the charges were dropped. Things finally reached a boiling point in 1980 when one of McElroy's ten children was accused of stealing from the town's grocery store. McElroy showed up with a shotgun and got into an argument with the 70-year-old owner. McElroy shot the elderly grocer, who thankfully survived. McElroy was arrested and this time he was actually convicted of assault, but he was released on bail until sentencing. While on bail, McElroy continued his bullish ways, carrying a rifle and threatening the life of the grocery shot. The town was so upset and terrified of McElroy that on July 10, 1981, they held a town meeting about what to do with him. While everyone was at the meeting, McElroy went to the town bar. The concerned citizens heard he was at the bar and ventured over to it. McElroy was leaving the bar with his 15-year-old wife, Trina, and while sitting in his truck, he was shot twice by two different guns. No one calls an ambulance, and the 47-year-old town bully died from his wounds. There were dozens of witnesses, and the killing took place in broad daylight, but only his wife claimed to identify a shooter. No one has ever been charged with the murder, and everyone in the town seems completely happy with that. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a like below, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this seven days of the week. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might want to check out if you enjoyed this one, and thank you for watching.